So today we are here with our first ever lecture. Woo! <laughs> um, many more to come. But today I want to focus on a topic of uh, biostatistics. So this is going to be a series of different lectures. Um, because I know how uh, difficult this topic could be for some people. Um, especially when they have to interpret uh, clinical trials. So I want to start from the basics. Then we're going to jump into all of that. Um, so that you could get a full understanding of this topic. So for this um, for this video, we're going to have multiple topics. So we have introduction to statistics, uh, slash biostats, descriptive statistics, and inferential statistics. So what exactly is statistics? Um, so statistics it basically has to do with you know like collecting data, um, analyzing data, uh, and then you know organizing the data in a way for you to understand or for somebody else to understand, um, and also presenting that data. Um, now, what exactly is this data? Now, um, so the data could be anything really, uh, as we see here in the examples. Um, you could be just like standing by the window looking, you know, you're looking out the window, you're, you're counting how many cars uh, stopped at the stop sign in the last 10 minutes. Um, so just analyzing and um, collecting these facts is, is, is known as data. So you're collecting, you're basically collecting data. Um, so that's the collection part or like the analysis. Um, then you can analyze the data further to determine how many of the cars were red black, blue, white, and then you could categorize these um, these different uh, characteristics of the cars. So that's when you basically organize your data or arrange it so that you have like red SUVs versus how many were red two-door cars. So you could tweak it and you could play around with it. So that's statistics. Now biostatistics is basically the same as statistics I mean, you're doing the same thing you do with uh, regular statistics, but you're doing it in the biology world, you know, so dealing with health, medicine, or even pharmacy. So you're collecting that data relative to these things. So certain examples include, like, uh, like the number of people in a country who developed heart disease in 2017. So you want to know that number so that you could interpret that number and say, oh... So from what I've seen here, it seems like people who are obese, you know, develop more heart disease. So something like that. You can interpret that data. Um, you can also present that data after you organize it in a way that you prefer. You can also look at, for example, what is the association between having heart disease and developing a stroke? Okay, so that's like another way you can interpret that data. But just notice how this statistics, compared to the last one we spoke about, this focuses on health, medicine, you know, biology, you know. Lastly, what percentage of people with heart disease were treated with a blood pressure medication? Okay. So, next we have descriptive uh, statistics. So basically, I explain what statistics is, right, and biostatistics. Basically, the same thing, just different fields. So now, what is descriptive to, uh, statistics? Um, so think about statistics being on top, and you can make like a line, like it's, it's, it's an umbrella term, statistics, and like certain things fall under. So descriptive is one of these things, and this is used to provide a simple summary of quantitative data. So this, you're, you're worried about the numbers. Um, that's what you're worried about. Instead of qualitative, um, data will not be inferred to the whole population. And this is very, very important um, with descriptive statistics. You're just describing, okay? You're not, you're not trying to make like a conclusion or you're not trying to uh, develop a hypothesis or something from this kind of data. Um, you're just describing it, okay? So you have some kind of data and you're just describing it. 10% um, of these people were, were African American, you know, 40% was Hispanics. So you're just describing it, okay? 
And there are four major types of descriptive statistics. So we have measures of frequency, measures of central tendency, uh, measures of dispersion or variation, and measures of position. As you can see on the next slide, uh, so measures of frequency, how often did the thing occur, right? So that's like another way you could collect uh, data. How often uh, did the uh, the red car stop at the light, you know? How often do people um, brush their teeth twice every day? Something like that. Right? So you can get a percent from it, you know? Measures of central tendency. So this is the center of a distribution of values. So you have a set of numbers and you want to know which one falls in the in the middle. All right. So as we know, like this is like mean, median, mode. And I'm not really going to dive into that. I'm assuming that you guys know what that means. Measures of dispersion variation. How spread out is the data? And this is very important um, because sometimes if you get different numbers, right? So let's say you're looking at test scores. So you get different values, right? Somebody scored 90, someone else scored 80 something, 70, and you take, you write all of these down, let's say for the whole class. Now, if you measure dispersion, you wanna know how, like the impact, right? Like how spread out is the data? Like is everybody getting close to 90? Or we have people that's getting 70s, 60s, you know. So you want to know how spread out is the is the data, right? Um, so that's basically what you use. You could use the range, uh, variance, and standard deviation, um, which is a very important topic and is going to come up later on also. Um, probably in the next uh, lesson of these uh, of the biostats. Measures of position describes how scores fall in relation to one another. Um, so this one is very common also. So like if let's say when you took your SATs or an exam and they give you the percent, the percentile that you fall in. So basically they're comparing how well you did compared to like the average. Next we have inferential statistics. Now, this is the use of a sample data of a population to make inference about the whole population. Okay, so sometimes we can't get the whole population, right? I can't get all African Americans or all white people into, into a clinical study, right? So to analyze them, but I could get a certain amount. So this is the sample, so the sample data um, so, so for example, so assume there are like 4 million red wing eagles in the USA. It would be impossible to capture all 4 million to analyze. It's actually, it, it might be possible, but you know what I mean. Instead, we will collect only 500,000. So we will take a sample out of that 4 million and then analyze them, okay? So then we found out that majority of the red wing eagles who were females in the 500,000 had heart malfunction. So here, what we did was that even though we took a sample out of the 4 million, um, we actually interpreted that data, analyzed these birds, and found this, this thing here uh, with the heart malfunction. Now, with inferential statistics, uh, you're able to make a conclusion um, about the whole population, so the whole 4 million um, of red wing eagles just using the results from the sample the sample collection okay so that's what you could do with inferential statistics but you got to look at certain factors you got to take certain things into consideration to help you decide can I actually make this inferential um, uh, statement about like the whole population uh, so we're definitely gonna focus on inferential statistics for bias stats because that's what you're gonna see commonly in um, pharmacy school, okay? So there are two main utilization of inferential statistics. So one is to estimate parameters, right? Estimated parameters. So let's say you have like some kind of data uh, that you you came up with this data based on a sample size, right? Not Not the whole population. So you analyze this data and you take a statistic. So let's say the mean or the, the standard deviation. 
how spread out are the numbers you know so you're gonna use this statistic to say something about the whole population mean okay so based on let's say your sample of birds that you took um how spread out or like the, the length of their wings right they're gonna have they're all gonna have certain length is it spread out do they have like so different numbers that fall far away from each other or like these numbers are very close um something like that so hypotheses test uh you use a sample data to answer research questions um, so example, in a sample of 100 people out of 1 million with a rare disease, does drug A show benefit in reducing mortality in patients with this rare disease? Okay, so based on your sample, you want to know more. Okay, so you can use uh, your sample data to answer, to come up with hypotheses and actually answer uh, research questions. And that will be the end of this lesson. Um, please, please leave some feedback. Uh, like I said, this is my, this is, I'm in the beginning, uh, the beginning time of my YouTube, I guess. <laughs> that's, that's what you want to say. So I'm definitely, uh, looking for feedback. Please don't hold back. But I promise you, these videos are going to get better. Um, don't forget to leave comments, any questions at all in the comments, or you can message me. I'm definitely gonna reply right away. Um, so I think the next the next lesson we're gonna focus more on the inferential statistics. We're gonna talk about no hypotheses, uh, p values, and all of those things. So see you then.